young generation, Jim Davidson. <laughs> All right. You look all right. How's the front row? Hello. How are you? Splendid. Just checking out the B-Day set. You know, the posh ones have hyzes, lines, and B-Days. Us poor people got to do handstand in the shower, but they have B-Days. Anyway. <coughs> oh, thank you very much. As you know, I'm just back, back from the Falklands entertaining the troops and they're trying to cheer them up. And believe me, they needed cheering up because as I got there, Paul Daniels was just leaving. <laughs> and, um, no, don't, no, don't, don't, don't. In actual, I said to one of the Falkland Islanders, you know, uh, would you like to have Paul Daniels back? They said, no, we'd rather have the Argentinians. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't got any in, have we? No, talking of old acts. Sorry, Paul, if you're looking. Um, Vaudeville and, and shows like this is a thing that sadly is dying for people of my age, you know. I mean, I've worked with some of the old vaudeville acts. I worked with a bloke who had a tap dancing duck. You wouldn't believe this. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Honestly, it was a Swedish fellow. He said, no, the duck for a tap dance on top of the piano for you. Getting a flirt, snake, getting a flirt, getting a duck and dancing for it. <laughs> and he played a piano and his duck used to tap dance like that. <laughs> it was quite hysterical. Anyway, the, the RSPCA banned him. This is gospel truth. They found out he had an op plate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'll tell you, <coughs> now, uh, what was I going to talk about? You were going to talk about when he was last working here. Yeah, I was, I came here to the London Palladium. I was here a while ago doing Panto. Panto, but the, the first time I was ever here, the first time I've ever been in the theatre, I was 12 years old doing the gang show with uh, the late Ralph Reader. Do you remember Ralph Reader? And I did the audition down in the bar where you are all going to go and get drunk at half time down there. Did the little audition. And I always remember it was 12 year old, I came up here, you know, my me, me mum dropped me off around the corner and said, oh, let me go on my own, mum, I'm a little bit nervous. So I went up to a fellow, I said, excuse me, can you tell me where the London Palladium is? There's a man who go round there and take the right turn, go round and round about and over. Go through the lights, eh, man, don't take right turn, let's go straight down it. <laughs> then you get there, London Palladium, you cannot miss it. Argyle Street, you know. I said, thank you very much, officer. <laughs> No, the police have been nice to me. They looked after my driving license for me for 18 months. You can always tell the police. <laughs> it's the nice ones. I always remember, I got pulled up once, you know, and they said, there's always a little skinny copper with a pointy head. It looks like a biro refill, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he had terrible acne. I said, cool, your face is bad. He said, yeah, my wife's trying to teach me to eat with a fork. <laughs> I said... He said to me, have you got any proof of identification? I thought, what the f I said, have you not seen the television? <laughs> Did you know I've been all flash? So he made me sit in the car and I sat there. Well, they check out to Endon Police College, you know, what you've been doing, all the rest of it. And uh, I said, do you mind if I go to the toilet? He said, no, please yourself. So I went to the toilet, then I got out of the car. <laughs> That's just how nasty they are. They walk around looking at your number plate. There's always two of them looking at your number plate, isn't it? You know what it is? One's good at numbers and the other one's good at letters. Have you not got that? <laughs> They walked around with the nickometer on. Nick, 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 nick. He said, your back light's not working. I said, I kicked it, it came on. He said, marvellous, can you go around and kick the front, see if this year's tax comes up? I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and when you park outside here, you get clamped immediately. I hope certain people have made arrangements. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I think the police do do a good job. It's just the little ones who are a little bit too keen on there. They're down the road and they're shaking hands with the padlocks. Scratching their heads. This young cop, I thought, <laughs> I thought, I'll find one. Nick, 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 oh, I got one, I got one. Oh. He's seen a fella wobbling on his bike like that. He grabbed him, he said, Oi, you're drunk. It's only the vicar. He said, I can't be drunk, I'm a vicar, man of the cloth. God is with me. He said, Gotcha, two on a bike, let's have you. <laughs> Talk you straight out. But now, you see. <clears throat> I always have a laugh with, with the police, but I'm invited to do policemen's balls and things like that, and I really have a, have a good time. <laughs> Where will we be? A policeman stopped me the other day. He said, are you drunk? I said, certainly not. He said, well, I am. Give us a lift back to the station, will you? And, do you know, there's a lot of crime that does go on, and without the police, where would we be? I know a fella that walked into a Chinese restaurant with a shotgun. He said, oi, give us all the money. The bloke said, to take away? <laughs> <laughs> Have we any Chinese people in? Is there a card game going on? <laughs> no, because, I mean... I, I, Chinese people are great, but it's the food's a little bit dodgy. You never know, do you, when you go in there? Well, I mean, if you leave a bit of a pork chop, you know if it's served up again, there's teeth marks in it, but you're not too sure with that other gear, right? 
And people always upset them. They thought, oh, I'll put that back, make pancake roll out that later on. <laughs> Give it to him next time he comes in for a takeaway, you know. I was a little bit suspect. I walked in this Chinese restaurant, the waiter walked past. I said, Oi, you. He said, Hi, I know my name. <laughs> I said, Come here, son. He said, What matter? I said, This chicken's rubbery. He said, Thank you very much. <laughs> just, just watch out when you're driving away tonight, because there'll be a lot of drunken motorists around tonight. Just be careful. You can see them, they've got little blue lights on the top. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> Watch when you go out, because I went in a place in the West End to get some cigarettes, and it turned out to be a strip club. Now, I didn't know. <laughs> and this woman come on, Madame Monique. I'll, have, I'll never seen anything like it. I was like, that. Ah, I couldn't believe it. And she said, Madame Monique, I thought, lovely French girl. She said, I'd like someone from the audience <laughs> to assist me with my act. And you know, there's always one nutcase. And you know, whenever you go out for a drink, there's always one who makes a fool of himself, you know? Like us lot out tonight, there's always one who goes over the top. <laughs> No, no, whenever you go out, there's always one who drinks too much and wants to start a fight and drops his trousers. Just generally all right pain. Anyway, she said, I'd like someone from the audience to assist me with my act. This is Madame Monique. This bloke got up on the stage. She said, put your head between my chests. He went like that. She went... <laughs> he said, went... <laughs> oh, it was disgusting, Mrs. I couldn't hear for a week. <laughs> Shocking. That was bad. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Chalky was going to be here tonight, but he couldn't get out of bed. Someone put Velcro on the headboard. <laughs> Velcro, it's like the stuff that it's like... <laughs> like to the final... <clears throat> I'll see him a while ago. Oh, I had to have a laugh. Before I tell this last guy, have we got anyone in from Ireland, by the way? I don't tell Irish jokes. I'm paid for comedy, not courage. <laughs> no, because my mother's Irish and she's told me not to do any Irish jokes, you know. So anyone in from the Fiji Islands? OK, we're all right. Play safe. Two Fiji Islanders walking down the road. One said, hey, Murphy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'll get a blow dart in my neck now. You watch it. So this Fiji Islanders walked up to this 53 bus. He said, excuse me now. I said, yeah. Me, I'm the conductor, the chief. Ding, ding. He said, how much is it to Woolwich Ferry? He said, Woolwich Ferry? 50p. He said, well, I'm not paying that. That's too much money. He said, well, you're not getting on. <laughs> Ding, ding. Off went the bus. I said, well, I show you, I'd run behind the bus and I'd save me money. He said, why don't you run behind the taxi and save some more money? <laughs> he said, don't come the old jokes to me. I'm as fit as a fiddle. I'd run behind the bus ten miles. He's running like that. He said, how much is it to Woolwich Ferry now? Is it £2.50? You're running the wrong way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great honour to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Good night and God bless you. Thank you.